And I'm Rob Macko. Now, he got the magazine away from a student who authorities say planned to shoot someone at Ripley Middle School two weeks ago. We have all heard horror stories happening on flights across the country with unruly passengers and flight cancellation. Parsons says he's glad he stepped in and says his mom is awfully proud of him. He's also now an honorary deputy sheriff for the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. It's always a concern. It's always dangerous. Meteorologist Joe Fitzwater live now with a look at what drivers can expect tonight and into the morning commute. Joe. We just had a bunch of Shriner guys on motorcycles pass us. We had some fire trucks from Cottageville pass us. We've got all these pageant kids. We've got soccer mom. We've got cool cars. Well, they are designed to help protect special needs students in the Mountain State. And today, Governor Jim Justice signed two bills into law aimed at protecting our most vulnerable. And from the state capitol to the corners of southeast Ohio, Andy Bernhardt is live in Lawrence County, where voters considered a measure about public safety and personal finances. But we begin tonight with the Republican race for governor. Governor Mike DeWine was given the green light by Republicans to give it another go. You definitely got to thank those first responders, too, for all that they've been doing today with the rescues and everything. Now, the rain does continue to fall, and for that, we're going to go to Chief Meteorologist Spencer Atkins. Spencer. First of all, what a beautiful day here in downtown Charleston, West Virginia. It is absolutely gorgeous outside. Everyone cannot wait to return to live events, big events, popular events. When it comes to the piano, Thompson says you never stop learning. During the pandemic, he played a lot of music and wrote a lot of music. And he has this advice for young up and coming musicians. But this building is so much more than a war memorial. Over the years, it's become an important cornerstone to the African American community in Kimball and McDowell County. That's right, Marilee. We do have a special presentation coming up in just a bit. All day long, we have been at three Piggly Wigglies the one in Sissonville on Bigley Avenue and also Kanawha City. We've been collecting food and money to help the less fortunate here in the Kanawha Valley. We are raising enough for 1,000 food baskets for this holiday season to help those families out. A leaked draft says the Supreme Court is set to overturn Roe v. Wade, the decision that protects a federal right to abortion. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Rob Macko. And I'm Marilyn McAuliffe. Crews are battling a big apartment fire right now in Huntington. The fire was reported in the 1100 block of Jefferson Avenue just before 10 p.m. Crews were on scene within minutes and heavy fire was already showing in front of the home. No injuries are being reported and there's no word on what caused the fire yet. Investigators in Braxton County believe the case of a woman driving her car into the river Sunday was murder suicide. 42 year old Latanya Bell, who had her eight year old daughter in the car with her, was from Cleveland. Security video from the Braxton County Senior Citizen Center shows Bell driving in the parking lot and then drive her car into the Elk River. Cabell County Sheriff's Office wants help finding a man to question him about a stolen credit card. Deputies say the man used the card at the Barbersville Walmart on Saturday. Anyone with information should contact the Cabell County Sheriff's Office. And we have a traffic alert for you. The railroad crossing near the West Virginia State Police Detachment will be closed starting tomorrow morning at 6 for maintenance work. Now this is on Jefferson Road in South Charleston. The city says this will be over at 6 a.m. the following day. Spencer, thanks. More than 50 tons of garbage collected during the spring 2022 team up to clean up event in Charleston. 10 tons came from the most recent event on April 30th. Now volunteers from local businesses, organizations and the city got together throughout the month of April to clean up neighborhoods in Charleston. Mayor Amy Goodwin says the event was a success and that everyone in the community worked hard. Charleston City Council tonight approved nearly $6 million for paving and sidewalk construction. The city says this is the largest investment in more than 20 years. Now the construction will include asphalt and concrete street paving and the construction of sidewalk ramps that comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act requirements. For a full list of where the projects will happen, you can go to our website, wowktv.com. Coming up, remembering Naomi Judd. The Country Music Hall of Fame honors her contributions to country music, while people who knew her share their memories. We're set to be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Now, we have been working on a story about the Judds going into the Hall of Fame for several weeks now. We had planned to do an upbeat, upbeat story, but that all changed with Naomi Judd's death on Saturday. It's so sad. Everyone we spoke with in Ashland talked about how deserving the Judds are to be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Winona is on tour this year and will do two shows at the Paramount Arts Center in Ashland on June 23rd and 24th. All right, a more positive music story now. Bridgeview Elementary students got to see a performance from the Ecuador music group Andes Manta. Kanawha County Schools 
says that students got to hear traditional folk music and sounds of the rainforest. They also got to learn about the history, music, and culture of Ecuador. Local educators are being recognized for their hard work and dedication. That's right. They were honored at tonight's Putnam County School Board meeting. Amy Blackwell teaches at Scott Tays Elementary. She won Elementary Teacher of the Year. John Schaller is the music teacher and band director at Winfield Middle School. He won Middle School Teacher of the Year. And Brittany Harper, who teaches at Winfield High School, won High School Teacher of the Year. A big congratulations to all of them. Meanwhile, in Eastern Kentucky, an officer was shot while responding to a call in Greenup County. 13 News reporter Anna King was in Flatwoods today and has the latest on the investigation. Thanks, it's election season and a battle of key endorsements is underway. West Virginia Democrat Joe Manchin shocked many in the political world. There's a chance because it's 83 and any storms can get really tall and become a problem. So we will track them for you all throughout the day. Yeah, just be careful out there, everyone. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be money. Thanks for joining us for 13 News at 11 from all of us here at 13 News. Be safe and have a great night. Have a good one. Well, I wish it could be completely adjusted for the rate of inflation, but this is a check to pay you back with the union took from you. A special ceremony honored 79 year old bass player Johnny Smith Saturday at Levi First Missionary Baptist Church in Rand. American Federation of Musicians Local 136 President Mike Pushkin apologized to Smith, the only surviving member of the band The In Crowd, which was punished for taking a stand against racism in 1968. I don't think that this necessarily makes things right. I think you know, justice uh, deferred is still justice denied. What this reaffirms is that Mr. Smith and his bandmates were right. So what happened? First, a little history. Johnny Smith was a popular musician in the Charleston area. He bought his first bass guitar at 18 while stationed in Germany with the U.S. Army. When he returned home, he began playing in rock and jazz bands throughout the Charleston area. He once played with Otis Redding in Beckley and did several shows with John Lee Hooker in Charleston. Talk that talk right now. Yeah, I sat in with him. I played with him. Uh, I found him to be a good, a good musician, a personable type of guy. Smith worked as a lineman with the power company by day and played music on nights and weekends. And one night, the racism of the 60s was something he couldn't ignore. Johnny Smith says that in 1968, he and his band members were playing on the third floor of the Charleston Athletic Club, which was on Canal Boulevard at the time. He says a black man and white woman sat down at one of the tables, but no one served them. They just sat there and they sat there and they sat there. And I think they danced a couple times, and then uh, when they sat back down, nobody had come. And this was an appreciable amount of time. It was over 15 minutes. Smith says he and his bandmates talked about it and decided to tell the manager about the situation, but they were ignored. Since he still didn't see anybody to wait on, just continued ignorance, we quit playing. Smith says taking that stand led them to being kicked out of the club. Worse, the musicians' union fined each member $150, which would be more than $1,100 today. It actually enraged me to the point, like I said, I never, I never joined the union again. I never went back. Johnny's son Brian says gigs only paid about $30 back then, so the $150 fine was significant. He was married. You know, it wasn't just him. So when they levied that fine on him, they knew full well what they were doing, and they were going to teach him a lesson. Brian says hearing the story over the years angered him, but he hopes the union's actions on Saturday will give his parents some peace. And it says a lot about the evolution of the union and the mindset. It says a lot about the evolution of the area. Brian's longtime friend Joe Slack got the ball rolling, telling Pushkin how the union treated Johnny Smith back then. To make amends, the union reinstated Johnny Smith and paid him back $250. Seeing justice almost done is just as important as being strong enough to forgive. And so I'm, I'm thankful that I was able to see that. I really am. In Rand, Rob Macko, 13 News, working for you. Bob Thompson is one of the most well-known musicians in West Virginia. He's respected by fans and musicians around the world. And we spoke with him about his lifelong love of music. 
Anyone familiar with West Virginia's music scene knows Charleston jazz pianist Bob Thompson. Originally from Jamaica in Queens, New York, he's been playing in West Virginia for more than 50 years. I came to go to West Virginia State College, and uh, you know, then I kind of fell in love with this area and have been here off and on ever since. Since 1991, he's been the pianist and featured artist for West Virginia Public Broadcasting's nationally syndicated show, Mountain Stage. Thompson has played all genres, from jazz to country to rock to blues. It's interesting. You never know till you show up what it's going to be, and that's what makes it fun. Some of his favorite musicians to play with during his career include the late jazz guitarist Larry Coriel, the late violinist John Blake, former Tonight Show music director and guitarist Kevin Eubanks, and drummer Omar Hakim. Larry Gross, the artistic director and former host of Mountain Stage, inducted Thompson into the West Virginia Music Hall of Fame in 2015. Anybody coming into the show immediately says, who's that guy, if they don't know him already. If, if they've been there, they go, hey, it's Bob, you know, but because he impresses them with his talent and, and especially his style. Thompson started out in music as a teenager as the bass singer in a doo-wop band called The Chanters. He played trumpet when he came to West Virginia State, but a jazz band he wanted to join needed a piano player. So I started fooling around with the piano, and uh, then I, once I did that, then I found out the piano was my home. You know, it was the instruments that uh, felt most natural to me. And the piano's been his instrument ever since. When it comes to the piano, Thompson says you never stop learning. During the pandemic, he played a lot of music and wrote a lot of music. And he has this advice for young, up-and-coming musicians. He says they should be prepared, learn about their instrument, and listen to music to hear what they like and what they don't like. Thompson says he learned this years ago when he took his music to the president of United Artists. He told me, uh, my door is always open to you, but when you come back, bring something that if I want to put this music out, I have to have you. So it's being yourself and getting your person into the music that's important. Thompson got to be himself on the many albums he's released over the years. Bob will never grow old because he is constantly learning and constantly listening. Now, if you want to learn, you can learn from him, but he's going to learn from everybody. And he'll be the first to tell you that music is good for the soul. Music does do that, you know, it, it, it's food for the soul. And uh, so, and we need that. We need that. We need that everywhere in our lives. And, you know, I can't imagine life without music. Well, I feel like I know him. <laughs> Rod, that was a really nice piece. <laughs> Thompson says he was able to create these opportunities to play music all across the state. Uh, yeah, in addition to his work with Mountain Stage, Thompson plays out with his jazz band called the Bob Thompson Unit. He's also written music for a new album, and he plans to record it soon. And, of course, loved uh, talking to Bob, and we wish him the best. Absolutely.